Hey everybody, JD here. I'm shooting this video. Uh, for those of you who were not able to make it to our all church meeting, I just wanted to create another space to communicate the shifts that are coming up this fall and some exciting things that God is inviting us into. We did do a live stream on our Facebook online group. If you're not a part of that group, I'd really encourage you to find that on Facebook and join it. But the audio was not so great and it was hard to see the visuals. So I just wanted to communicate uh, straightly, uh, straight to you here and let you know quickly kind of what's what was uh what the updates are what we're doing this fall um and so that you can be in the loop and so you can respond as well so what i hope to do is just kind of give you a picture of what north city looks like this fall by going through the who what when where why points of who we are as a community and maybe some emphasis on some of why we made those choices why we're moving in that direction and then ultimately uh, offer an invitation to participate in that and ways to participate in that. Many of you watching this are highly invested and participating regularly. So part of this will just be how that participation shifts. But uh, these are good and natural points to just pause and say, hey, we appreciate how much you've invested in North City. You are a big part in, in uh how we've responded to God these last few months, and here's how we continue to do that. Here's how you uh, can continue to do that. So first off, uh, just wanna uh, state some things that are happening that we're moving towards, and then maybe back up a little bit and say, this is how we got there. So the big news is that uh, most of all, we feel called to fully inhabit this identity of a table-centric church, which means for us, we feel called to having what we're calling community dinners or dinner church every week this fall and specifically the where at Weber Park. So we're returning back to where it all began. Weber Park uh, for many reasons is just uh, the best space we can uh, find now and uh, we'll be doing that timing wise because I know many of you have that question. For the foreseeable future we will stay at 5 p.m. Part of the why behind that is that um, one Many of you have articulated that you've kind of settled into that rhythm of 5 p.m. Many of the new neighbors who come and join us love that time. And we think uh, for now, it's a great space to connect with people who aren't in a rhythm of going to church. Um, uh, that 1030 hour in the morning is just kind of a Christian time, uh, which is not bad at all. And maybe in the future, God will call us to inhabit that time either with an, another community dinner or uh, shift to that time based on what we're learning. But for now, uh, that 5 p.m. time seems to be a great time to connect with the neighbors that we want to connect with. And that really is the why behind that big shift. Uh, I just have to back up and say that three, four months ago, there was tons of uncertainty in who we were as North City. Like, uh, it was hard to know how to participate. Many of you, uh, for many different reasons, um, felt like a little dry in your participation with North City. It was just hard, there was a lot going on. But ultimately, I think we made this shift towards Dinner Church because it didn't fully, fully feel like us. It didn't fully feel like an authentic response to our mission of loving our neighbors in the way of Jesus, simply because our neighbors weren't there. We weren't seeing a lot of uh, impact, if you will, or a connection with the people that we wanted to love and we've made a tough call and said hey for the summer we're going to experiment with doing something different and the results are in with that experiment just to be real honest and frank like we grew the first one we had like 25 50 70 70 70 like really consistent the last three ones and over those five times that we've done it we have seen nearly 60 new people those are people who have never been to north city before or maybe once a long time ago but a majority of those people had never been to north city before and through these community dinners we have new community members who have become integrated in the life of our church and so um we're doing it we're responding in really authentic exciting ways to who jesus has called us to be and a uh, part of my job as a pastor is to listen to what the holy spirit's saying to us together and name that and it was resoundingly clear that all of you, or I shouldn't say all, but many of you, a majority, a overwhelming majority of you said, yes, this is us. I think everyone who formally filled out the survey said, this is needs to be, this clearly is a big part of who we are. 
going forward. And that is being a dinner church. So that's why we're choosing this. It's, it's effective. It's working. We love it. There's so much joy that we're having in it. So that's what we're doing. We're sort of re, uh, engineering ourselves if you if you can in a way to make that our main thing so what are the consequences positive consequences i think of making that our main thing of course weekly uh community dinners means that uh the future of micro churches has has to change so if you've participated in micro churches in the every other week rhythm um, those have been really, really valuable spaces, primarily for community. And what I mean by community is, um, to back up a little bit for the why for that, um, what we feel called to as the leaders of North City, the staff, what we are trying to do on a fundamental level is create spaces that help you love your neighbors more, uh, love God more, and love each other better. And those three uh, important movements are what makes a healthy church. So that's why uh, we think we've created an amazing expression where you can love your neighbors really well in a simple way. And we've kind of made that the main thing. And that's not to say it doesn't have different elements of loving God and loving each other in the midst of it, but it has kind of a primary uh, thing that it does. So we're trying to create other spaces in midweek um, or on occasion that reinforce and help you um, to grow in your love of God and help create the context for you to love each other really well. So that was a long aside to say that's where North City communities are headed. So we're no longer going to use the term microchurch. We're going to use the term back to the term North City communities. And instead of being bi-weekly, like everyone in the church who's participating is doing this as the Sunday expression, they're going to move to being less organized and more organic, which means they might happen midweek. It might happen once a month. It might happen on occasion. And what we're trying to do is to tr create communities within our broader community so that you have spaces of belonging. What I mean by they might be more organic is they'll start as there's leadership and vision for them. So if someone comes to me and says, I would really love, I think uh, there is enough a community here for a mom's group or a dad's group or a parent's group or something like that. I would, I'll go to them and say, that sounds like an awesome North City community. What I, what I would hope for is just some consistent rhythm um, so that people know how to jump into it and uh, for it to be a space where people can come and uh, feel invited who come to the community dinners so that they uh, could, we can make those available so people feel comfortable that they can come and participate in those things. So what this means real practically is that your uh, micro church leaders, which are now going to be, we're going to call them North City communities, are discerning along with you who participate in those things, what the future is for those. And I would guess some will probably stop just because it's a real natural stopping point and celebrate uh, what they've been for this past year and how they've really been instrumental in guiding us through uh, a really tough year and getting us connection with one another on a way that helped us uh, uh, walk through a really isolating year. Um, and celebrate those. Some of them may continue in just a different way. Like uh, maybe they'll continue once a month just explicitly to gather for community reasons. And I hope that um, with the ending of some of these, some new ones will begin as well. So that's North City Communities. Those will happen on occasion and start organically. So the other spaces, what what else is going on at North City? One of the things that we heard from you loud and clear, and I'm, I'm really for this, is that by choosing the dinner church expression as our primary expression on Sundays, not to say we're completely missing this, but we certainly have a diminished expression than what we're used to getting as Christians who participate in church. And what I'm talking about is worship and teaching. Uh, you've been to community dinners, so you know that we have worship on background, which means we have an atmosphere of worship around the Jesus table there, uh, which is really beautiful in its own way. And I have found myself stopping and listening to the lyrics and hearing from them and feeling connected with God because of the atmosphere of Kara is setting for us or whoever's playing. 
but there still is this longing and desire I know in me and I know in you from hearing from you for this extended focused worship time, which we're, um, we're, we're committed to continuing to create that space on at least a monthly basis, maybe more in the future. Uh, so we'll have worship nights once a month, every month. We think there'll be Thursday nights at four. Uh, we'll see how that progress or Thursday, not, not at four. Let me correct myself. Thursday nights at seven 30, every fourth Thursday of the month. Um, similarly, we heard from you that even though we do a Jesus story every time we're together and there's some really good teaching in that, and there's something to come away with, and there's some beautiful things that come out of being able to discuss a little sermon right after it's given and some beautiful points that come out in conversation with other people, which is to say we're discovering a new way to learn about Jesus and be taught by each other. Despite that, there's still this de desire for more teaching, more uh, extended time of just like, hey, let's look at the Bible together or let's look at an aspect of Christian discipleship together for an extended period of time. Hearing from either myself or another teacher who's thought about that and who cares about you and wants to invest in you. And for those of us who are learners and want to learn, we desire that kind of space to create that uh, together. So I we see that happening in two different ways. One way is that we want to have a teaching night, just like a worship night that might look something like this. We might have a sort of a dinner beforehand just to connect with each other. And then it'll slide into some focused teaching and some child care um, for maybe an hour or 45 minutes, maybe like teaching for 40 or something. And then like actually integration and discussion of it. So more details on that, but we're trying as an experiment to create that physical space together. Also, I'm very interested in um, resurrecting our uh, midweek podcast a little bit to create more of those teaching opportunities for you to passively just engage in uh, for your own spiritual development, for your own relationship with Jesus. Both of those spaces are designed uh, to help you love God more deeply. So that's what we're headed towards this fall. So a couple of miscellaneous questions might be, what about discipleship table? How does that fit in? Those are going great. We hope they continue. They're really valuable aspect of the loving God and loving each other as uh, parts of it. Also help us love our neighbors, but those two are the focus areas for that. We're gonna do a little vocabulary reset on that and not call them discipleship tables anymore and call them just men's and women's groups. That's a little bit easier for new people to just understand what they are and then we can clarify the sort of trusted safe space conversation part of it. So men's and women's groups will continue on their current rhythm, which is bi-weekly, and we hope those grow and develop as well. So I want to just say, like, you might be sitting here wondering, like, well, what does it mean to participate in North City? Like, there, this is a lot of stuff. It feels like it would fill up my calendar if I did all these things. And absolutely it would. I think I just pastorally want to say to you, coming and participating in community dinners in dinner church is participating in North City. That's church for us. And we think that's a wonderful participation. And if I'm going to give you a hierarchy of things that I hope that you can engage in, that's number one. I think that space is beautiful. It holds all that is church in it in a lot of ways. Everything else you might think about as supplemental, like this This is things that will enhance your spiritual life. And you may choose one of them at a different season of your life, depending on what you need. You might come into the season this fall and say, hey, man, I really need community right now. And either join or help to start a North City community to create that uh, for yourself with the other, other people. Or you might be like, I'm just craving some Christian teaching. Like I just really want to learn the way of Jesus. And I want, I want to learn that stuff. I want that space. So carve out teaching night for you. Listen to the podcast. If, and when it comes out, or if you're like, goodness gracious, I just need some worship time, mark your calendar, like be there, make sure that you can find, you know, babysitter if you need one or something like that to really carve out those times for you. I'm not, I really, I don't have expectations for you. My, my philosophy of church is more like what it says in Ephesians, equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. I believe that God has called you, has empowered you, has gifted you with amazing things in order for you to love him, love your neighbor and love each other around you. And North City and 
me as its leader or one of its leaders is trying to create spaces to help you better do that. And you can discern which of those spaces helps you do that best. I think for a consistent Sunday rhythm, the best thing for us to do is to eat together, to be together, to be at a Jesus table together, which we call dinner church or community dinner externally. That's the best thing that you can do. In that vein, here's here's what's here's what it means for you to invest in North City, what the ask is from me as your pastor. What I want to ask you to do if you're a part of North City is 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 maybe a couple things to just say, hey, this is what it means for us to be in. The first thing is uh, to join a host team for community dinners. In order for us to go to weekly, we need more people to step up and say, yes, I will host at least once a month. And here's what that means. That means that of the one of four or five Sundays a month, um, you're just fully on there serving. You're helping to make it happen once a month so that the other times a month you can just show up and be the analogy that i've been talking about is like i have a huge extended family and whenever we get together for a common meal or something like that there's usually a handful of people who are really running it who are really hosting it it's either their house at their house or it's in my case it's usually like the aunties uh like plan the meal and stuff like that that's just how they roll um but they're making it happen. They're the ones setting up the tables. They're the one making sure everybody knows where the food is. Like they're hosting. They're making sure there's stuff for the kids to do and stuff like that. They're hosting, they're on for that one. And then me as just a part of the family, like I'll often just show up and I know that I can be there and sit around the table, laugh with my relatives, engage. And also the beautiful thing about those gatherings, maybe this isn't your experience, but it's mine, is there's always a stranger there. There's always a stranger or two or three or four or five who just get invited by someone or just stumble upon it. That's happened sometimes. And we invite them in. And I, as a Larson, know from these family gatherings, or it's not known, it's not like a requirement. It's just the culture of our family gatherings to go up to that person, introduce myself and make sure that if they're sitting alone, that they don't sit alone for too long, that we want them to be welcomed in uh, to the experience of our gathering. We want, uh, so translate that to church and what we want for North City, what that looks like is strangers uh, becoming friends and neighbors and getting invited into the family of God. So that's just a long way to say what I hope for you and your participation of North City is that you can help be the ones that are really putting it on once once a month and then you can come and just be a part of the family uh, the other time. So hopefully that makes sense. And it's a really huge thing for us, for you to communicate and say, yes, I wanna do that. Many of you are already doing that, serving once a month, but just confirm with me, I'll check with you. I would love to hear like, yes, I'm in for this next season for once a month. So that's a primary thing to participate in North City. Like I said, the rest of the stuff we're doing is really you discerning that you need that and then you showing up in that space. And we'll continue to pour investment into those spaces the more that we see you show up. If a lot of you show up, if a lot of you invest in teaching and worship nights, then we'll keep pouring resources into them because they're clearly equipping you to do the work of loving your neighbors in the way of Jesus. The other thing I'd say is, Obviously, we have to pay for this, and this is the last piece of financial update that I'll or update that I'll give. And um, the the short ask of you um, is to continue to financially participate in North City. If you if you do that, maybe even look at your finances and say, "Hey, I've been giving this so far. Is there an invitation or opportunity in this next season that?" that North City's investing in these community dinners. They're clearly helping us fulfill our mission of connecting with neighbors and they're becoming a part of our our church and hearing about Jesus, re-engaging with their faith. All of those things are happening, by the way, and we've only done it five times. It's a great investment to make. Think about, hey, is this is how, is, is God asking me maybe to increase my generosity? But you guys are so generous already, so keep doing it. If you're not a financial participant with North City, around here we just say our goal isn't a percentage or a certain amount from you. We want you just to prayerfully discern at whatever percent or whatever amount makes sense for you right now. Our goal is 100% participation. We don't have a set financial goal from you or from a, for a church necessarily, we just we just want everybody to participate in being generous at whatever level makes sense for you. 
And uh, that's why we say generosity is not what God wants from us, but what God wants for us. And we really think financial participation in our mission, having more ownership in what we're doing in that way is, is a great way uh, to grow uh, as a person. So uh, last few moments here, just want to give you an update uh, about our budget. So the generosity team, and the leadership team have been hard at work uh, crafting a budget that makes sense for a dinner church, for a community dinner. And we have, uh, we're working on putting a budget together and our fiscal year starts in October. We're working on putting a budget together that uh, helps us to grow into financial self-sustainability, A. So that's part one. So we kind of have a part one of the budget that's like, here's what North City needs to pay for what it's doing right now. And we don't have enough local giving to pay for that on this day, but we want to set up our budget to pay for the operations so that in the next fiscal year, when our outside support runs out and we have to become self-sufficient from our local giving itself, that we can pay for what we are doing. Now, in addition to that, so that that means some, let me pause and say that means some things. That means we're paying for the staff we need to execute a community dinner in the life of our church. It means though, that one of the biggest things it means is that that budget only demands 20 hours from Christian Ann and I, that component of the budget. So North City as a community dinner church, I believe needs about 20 hours of pastor's time to keep doing all the things that I just said to equip those spaces. Now, what is also a calling mostly for me, but also for North City, I think, is to invest in what I would call more Jesus tables, more community dinners, more expressions of church around a table. And that could look like uh, someone from Minneapolis who hears about what we're doing or who's a part of our community already who catches this vision for community dinner and wants to start another one or wants to start maybe a smaller iteration in their own home or something like that, where any iteration where strangers, where a Jesus table is used for strangers to become neighbors and get invited into the family of God. I personally feel called to invest my time uh, into seeing if in one year, we can start a movement of Jesus tables at uh, in Minneapolis. And I've already got people that I'm talking to. And for that work, I feel committed to going and raising outside support of North, outside of North City, so support from our sending churches and my own network of supporters to do that work. So in combination of those two things, North City's local budget, what it can pay for and it, what it can pay us as pastors for, plus that work of starting more Jesus tables around Minneapolis, St. Paul area, or even beyond maybe. Um, in combination of that revenue, uh, it will be about or a little under a full-time job for Christian and Ann and I. And I think in doing so, there'll be a lot of synergy between those two components, if you will. Uh, those two aspects that me doing the other work will actually add value to and be connected to the work that I'm doing with North City and vice versa. So those are the biggest updates. Um, just some other things that are really important for you to know that you might pick up an email. Um, we're, we, we've hired two new people now. So we have a new intern, Claudie Corville. You probably saw an email about him. He's great, wonderful. Uh, and then we had uh, Brie Wetzel accept the community coordinator position, which she'll be easing into as well. So these are really exciting times at North City. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for sticking it out for these 23 minutes. Uh, I got going there. I'm really passionate about this work. We're all really passionate about what's happening. I know that this is different. I know that um, choosing to do church this way costs us something. And um, it will take some adjustment period. We're already in the adjustment period of living into a different way of being the church. And so let's lean on each other. Let's celebrate together. Let's be able to voice the tensions of that and the hard things that come up as we live into a different way. But you guys, I'm 100% convinced this is what God's asked us to do. I'm 100% convinced this is worth it because um, our neighborhood needs this in this time of isolation that we're all experiencing. So thank you. Let me know if you have questions, concerns, comments. Um, appreciate you. Bye.